Who created God? Or, where did God come from? If the universe created you. Who created your creator, the universe? Religious people ask atheists this question, knowing that according to the existing laws of nature, matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. Atheists cannot answer the question of how matter and energy, which had exploded in the Big Bang, came into being, because the law of conservation says that matter and energy cannot spontaneously come into existence from nothing. However, atheists usually respond to this question with a counter-question, who created God? At first glance, it seems that the result is a draw, like a pat position in chess, where everyone retains his earlier position, and no one wins. Before we give a logical answer to the question, who created God? We will try to explain the most common prejudices, that most people have about the concept of God. People ask such questions, because of their misconception of God. People usually imagine God as a man, with a long beard and gray hair, floating on clouds, surrounded by angels. So, people imagine God in a human body, limited by time and space, and limited within our three dimensions. People look at God, as if He has human qualities and human limitations, so they think, if something is impossible for man, it must be impossible for God too. However, if God lives in another dimension, if He lives beyond time and space, unlike us, if a man is just a physical being, while God is a spiritual being, then man would have a problem understanding who God is, what is He made from, and what kind of characteristics He has. A man from Flatland. To understand how difficult it is for a man to understand God, as an illustration, we will use the story of a man, from an imaginary flatland. Imagine a man, living in a world of two dimensions. His world is like a piece of paper. It only has length and width. There is no height in his world. We live in a world of three dimensions. We have length, width, and height. Height is what distinguishes the two-dimension world, from a three-dimension world. A man from a three-dimension world, cannot be squeezed into the two-dimension world, we cannot push him onto paper, because the paper has no height. We can draw a man in two dimensions, draw a portrait or profile, but the picture does not show a three-dimension person in full, but only his two dimensions, only one part of that man. We can draw a man's portrait or profile, draw how he looks from the back, or from above. The man seen from above, would look unrecognizable to a person in a two-dimension world, since there is no height, and he never saw a man from above. So, no matter how we draw a 3D man in a two-dimension world, we cannot show all the traits of that man, but just one angle of the 3D man, his partial qualities, but 3D man is much more than what we can draw in two dimensions. The third dimension would be viewed as a miracle, and a violation of natural laws, as something impossible to understand. This is exactly how people perceive God, as an impossible being, because it violates the natural laws of our limited, three-dimensional world. To illustrate this, imagine that a stick figure man from a two-dimension world, meets a ball, 3D ball instead of a 2D circle he used to see in his 2D world. If a three-dimensional object enters into a two-dimensional world, it would have to occupy a two-dimensional shape, that does not reflect all of its 3D properties. Even then, everything about the 3D being, would look like a wonder for a 2D being. Let me explain this. The ball would turn into a circle, to be visible in a two-dimensional world. We would not see the height of the ball, and we would expect that the ball is limited by two dimensions, as well as the stick figure man. However, the ball has features that a 2D person can hardly imagine existing, because his understanding is limited to length and width, and he does not understand the third dimension. Likewise, it is difficult for people to comprehend the qualities of God, living in dimensions we are not aware of, whose very existence is difficult for us to imagine. It would be a great shock for a man from the two-dimension world, if he saw a 3D ball entering his 2D world. At first, he would see only one small spot, where the ball touched the paper, and appeared in his flatland world. It's like dipping a ball in a color, and touching the paper with a colored spot, there would remain a point, or a small circle at the location where the ball touched the paper. 
the man would be amazed, because a previously non-existent point, suddenly appeared in the world with two dimensions, and became matter. To him, it would appear to be a violation of natural laws, so the man from Flatland would think he was hallucinating. What he saw, could not spontaneously appear in the two-dimension world. If this ball enters deeper, into the two-dimensional world, from one dot its cross-section will become a small circle, which will become bigger and bigger, as the ball goes through the paper. While the miracle continues, it is absolutely incomprehensible to the man from Flatland. A man from a two-dimension world, consists of a series of dots. The circle is a curved line, made also of a set of connected dots. However, it would be wrong for a 2D man, to think he understands what this ball is, because the ball has just one small similarity to him. He does not know, that the circle he saw, is just an intersection of the ball, a limited 2D representation of a more complicated 3D reality. The other properties of the ball, are not visible to the man from Flatland. If God or an angel materializes in our dimension, we would see only one aspect of his being, while all the other traits of a spiritual being from another dimension, would remain unrevealed to a man. The more that the ball enters into a two-dimension world, the more the paper shows an increasing circle. And when it passes its equator, the circle would become smaller and smaller, until again it becomes one dot, that disappears. All this, to a man in a two-dimensional world, looks like matter and energy were created, and then destroyed, which is impossible, according to the laws of nature in 2D world. In reality, neither creation, nor destruction of matter happened, but the overlapping of two different dimensions. Everything that a man, from a two-dimensional world knows about reality, is not enough to explain a ball from a three-dimension world. The same way, all our knowledge of our three-dimensional world, is not sufficient to understand God's nature, if God has many dimensions that we do not know anything about. God seems scientifically impossible to men, a miracle, because our knowledge of reality is limited to what we know about our world. Even if a man from two-dimensional world does not believe in miracles, a miracle happened in the front of his eyes. Now, imagine the ball fills the entire room in its equator, and speaks to the man from Flatland. The man would hear a voice that comes, not just from one direction, but from all directions around him. The voice of a being from the third dimension, would be a shock for a 2D being. Just as the Apostle John described God's voice, like the sound of rushing waters, or as a loud voice, like a trumpet. After some time, when a man from Flatland gets used to the voice from the circle, imagine the ball wants to introduce itself to the 2D man, and explain how a sphere really looks. This would be incomprehensible to a man of two dimensions. To a man with limited knowledge, this seems to be psychotic hallucination, but in fact, it has a rational explanation, easy to understand by more intelligent beings. What does the man from Flatland imagine, when he hears word ball? People in a three-dimensional world, can easily illustrate the ball on 2D paper with a circle, and imagine the third dimension of the ball, that we cannot see. However, for a man in the 2D world, a ball is an irrational object from the world of imagination, something that no one has seen in his world, and one can only believe, that there is something like that, because in two dimensions, he cannot see the full nature of the ball. That's why our stick figure man, would not believe that the ball really exists. He would rather think, that one day he would find a scientific answer within his 2D world, to a question why these dots and lines look like a miracle to him, and in fact, they look just as like optical illusion to him. Imagine, that you are in the two-dimension world, in the plane, and on the horizon, a circle is coming closer to you. On the horizon, our circle would look like a line. If you look at the circle from the right, and the left side, you would still see only one curved line. A man in two dimensions, would not be able to see the whole image of a circle, which we see on the paper when we look from above, let alone could he imagine the ball parts, that exist outside of 2D world. If a man saw, that the curved line ends where it started, he might imagine the shape of a circle in his head. However, if a person is experientially limited by two dimensions, he cannot imagine a three-dimensional object such as a ball, because it is beyond his ability to understand, something he has never seen, and therefore he would think it is a miracle. 
if he saw only a cross-section of a complex creature like a 3D man, out of the cross-section, a man from the two-dimensional world, cannot have the correct idea of the physical appearance, of the entire being from a higher dimension, let alone his intellectual processes, and his spiritual world. For a 2D man, it is impossible 3D man to exist, because he is intellectually incapable, of even imagining its existence. The only way a 2D man could imagine a ball, is to take a drawn circle on the paper, and rotate the paper very fast vertically. However, there is no third dimension, or height in his world, and he simply cannot do it. A man from a two-dimensional world, would try to rotate the paper horizontally to the left or to the right, but he would still only see the circle. He would argue that the ball does not exist at all, that there is no third dimension, no one ever saw a ball in nature, and it is not scientifically possible, or provable in the 2D world, that a ball could exist. Just as the 2D man could not imagine the properties of the ball, due to his experiential and intellectual limitations, in the same way, we cannot imagine that God exists, in dimensions unknown to us. In a two-dimensional world, the belief that there is a ball, would be classified a religion, because it looks like a miracle, instead of exact science. The only argument acceptable to a man in two dimensions, is the argument at his level of understanding, even though the truth is way beyond his understanding. A person from the two-dimensional world, does not want to accept the possibility that the ball exists, because it seems impossible to his mind. Even if the ball appears before him, and someone explains to him the nature of the three-dimensional world using 2D terminology, the man would be a skeptic, who would not accept that he, is not the smartest being in the world. This story of two and three dimensions, shows us how limited is our understanding of the world around us, and especially, how much we do not understand, the concept and nature of God. So, who created God? The question, who created God? shows a basic misunderstanding of who God is. The question who created God? is irrational, because the concept of God, implies a being outside of time and space, a being not limited by the laws of nature like human beings, a being who always existed, without beginning and end of its existence, a being present everywhere by the Spirit, and who knows everything. This eternal being cannot have a cause for his existence. God is self-sustaining, he exists by himself, and his existence does not depend on anything. People do not understand the idea that God, does not need a cause for his existence, because man does not have that trait. God as a being, is far more complicated than man, in dimensions that we do not know anything about, and which are difficult for us even to imagine. The question, who created God? Is asked by people who equate God with men, and they think God is subject to the laws of nature as we are. People are inclined to limit God, to what only we as humans can do. If people cannot do something, they often think that even God cannot do that. If the laws of nature limit us, people think that the laws of nature must limit God too. If we are wondering, what the cause of matter, energy, and life would be, it is clear to us, that this cause cannot originate in our three-dimensional world, but outside of it. We know, according to the laws of nature, that matter, energy, and life, cannot be spontaneously created, so no one knows how the matter and energy, that allegedly exploded in the Big Bang, formed the universe. Even if we include time as a fourth dimension, together with length, width and height, we still do not have an answer to the question of the origin of matter and energy. Whatever caused the existence of time, height, width and length, it must still be in a higher dimension, which is very difficult for us to understand. The world cannot be created from within it cannot create itself, but needs someone outside of the cosmos, to be able to create it. God did not create the universe from within, because it would mean that the universe already existed. It must have been, that there was nothing, that there was no universe, that there was no energy, matter and time, that there was only God. Then, God created the universe, which means matter, energy, space and time. If so, if it is necessary that God exists outside of the universe, then it means, God is not subjected to the laws of matter and energy. God is above all natural laws. Natural laws cannot restrict the God who made them. On the contrary, only God can restrict natural laws, not the opposite. If the laws of nature were not created, 
we would rather expect to see chaotic behavior of matter, and incapability to form anything meaningful or useful. The fact that there are laws in nature, points toward intelligent creation, to the creation of matter and energy by an intelligent being. The origin of the universe had to be a singularity, a unique event in history, when matter, energy, and life were created. People who believe in spontaneous evolution, believe in uniformity and deny the existence of singularities, because they believe, all the processes have always been as they are today. However, today we are not able to see that matter, energy, or life, can spontaneously appear. How did God originate then? This question is addressed to the wrong person, because God is described in the Bible, cannot be influenced by time, matter, or space. If someone is affected by time, matter or space, that proves he is not God. Time, matter and space must come all together into existence, all at once, because they cannot exist without another. If there is matter, and there is no space, where will you put the matter? If there is matter and space, but there is no time, when, will you put matter into space? Everything would be frozen in one point in time. Time, matter and space, do not exist independently from each other, they had to exist at the same time. The Bible described this in the first sentence. In the beginning, this is the time, God created the heavens, this is space, and the earth, this is matter. We describe time as the past, the present, and the future. Space is described as the length, width and height. Matter is described as solid, liquid, and gas. So the three basic elements of the universe, we describe in its three basic states. So, it is not surprising that God is described in the Bible as the Father, the Son or Word, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when God created matter, space and time, He existed outside of His creation. If someone is limited by matter, space and time, that proves he is not God. For example, a painter is not part of the image he painted, and he does not have the same characteristics as the image he made, so God also cannot be understood, by comparing him to the laws he created in the universe. The IT technician, who created a computer, cannot be identified as the same as the computer, or imagined as he constantly changes numbers and letters on the screen. The creator of the computer exists outside of the computer. The same way, when God created the world, He was outside of the universe, and the universe cannot have an influence on God, while God can influence the universe. The laws of the universe cannot be applied to God, as the laws of how computer functions, cannot be applied to the computer technician and programmer. The computer programmer can speak other languages than computer program languages, he can breathe, eat, and think about abstract concepts, while computers are limited to the program his author made for him. The problem of understanding the unknown concept, appears when people apply to God, who created the universe, laws that can be applied only to what was created, but not to the Creator. In order to create the universe, God had to be outside of the universe, and therefore independent of the laws in nature He created. If a car uses gasoline as a fuel, it does not mean that the car designer, also must run on gasoline. Any designer is independent from his creation, and he is not subjected to the rules that apply to his creation. Therefore, God is not subjected to the laws of nature. If matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed, it does not mean that God cannot create or destroy them. If we put the unlimited God in our limited mind, then such a God would not be worthy of being worshipped. If God was created, it would be a proof that He is not God. If God exists, He cannot be an entity that exists only within the universe, but the Creator of the world is the cause of all causes. This is why, God cannot be explained by natural processes and laws, because God proceeds, and causes natural processes. All explanations of creation, even in science, refer to a dimension above our four dimensions. String theory proposes the existence of ten different dimensions. Even that complicates our understanding of truth, for a being from four-dimensional world, when we try to understand the origin of the universe. What is the fifth dimension? We know about length, width, height or depth, and time, but it is difficult for us to imagine the fifth dimension, which they say is a parallel world similar to ours. It is even more difficult for us to imagine the sixth dimension, or the seventh, eighth, ninth or tenth dimension, 
described as infinite possibilities. Equations in mathematics suggest that there are even more dimensions. The theory of boson and quantum theory, suggests that there are as many as 26 dimensions. These equations cannot be proven, in our world of three or four dimensions. This shows us how complicated it is, to understand the concept of what God is, because God is different from man, to the extent that is difficult for us to understand the part of God's nature, that is beyond all dimensions. The question, who created God? Or how God originated, is based on the wrong assumption that God's existence is limited by natural laws, the same way as we are limited, so it is impossible to give a rational answer to this question. God is not limited by natural laws. Who is God? If God is not a man-like being, with a beard and gray hair, then, who is God? God is not limited by physical form as man is, so the Bible described how God appeared in various forms, for example, as a dove, when Christ was baptized, in a pillar of cloud or fire, and also in a human form. People have been indoctrinated by the wrong picture of God. This is why our concepts are greatly influenced by the wrong picture of God, that most religious people have, as well as atheists. People attribute human characteristics to God, even though God has far superior qualities. For example, Jesus says, God is a spirit. Although we use the word spirit, we do not know what the spirit is, except that the spirit is something immaterial in nature. It is difficult for a man to understand who God is, because God is a spiritual being, and spirit is not something that we humans can define. Considering we cannot know who God is, He needs to tell us who He actually is. If you are looking for a definition of God in the Bible, God did not describe Himself in physical terms, but in abstract terms difficult for us to understand. It is incomprehensible to us, that in the Bible God is described as light. We cannot understand how a person can be light. God is light if we speak figuratively, because He enlightens people with the truth, but here is also a description of God's nature, that transcends all human abilities to comprehend. For example, this means that God has a speed of at least 300,000 km per second. It is incomprehensible to us, how a person can be a word, and to create our world with that word. Also, Jesus says that God is not flesh or blood. Moses says, God is not a man. The Apostle John says, no one has seen God at any time. We wonder how one can be a person, and be invisible, because in a world of three dimensions, this is impossible. We don't know how a person can be love, because Apostle John says, God is love. It is incomprehensible to us that God can be eternal, which means that He lives beyond time, beyond present, past and future, and He can still appear in our time. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So, God exists from everlasting, which means from eternity, because God has no beginning, and God exists to everlasting, through eternity, which means that God has no end. Everything has a beginning and an end, except God. He has always existed. When the Bible speaks of the creation of the world, it starts with the fact, that in the beginning God had already existed, and that all matter came into existence through God. We cannot understand how God can know everything, and how we cannot hide anything from Him, but the prophet says, Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places? so I shall not see him. Says the Lord, do I not fill heaven and earth? All these attributes of God, tell us he exists outside of space and time, that he has a spiritual nature, difficult for us to comprehend, but certainly not limited by space and time. If God was simple enough to allow people to understand him, then atheists would argue God is not complex enough, to be worthy of worshipping. God outside of time and space. The Bible writers were aware, that the universe cannot limit God. But who is able to build Him a temple, since heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain Him? Not only that God is described in the Bible as a being outside of space, but also outside of time, because time has no influence on Him. The Bible says, that a thousand years looks like an enormous amount of time for men, but it is like one day for the eternal God. God created time, 
so time cannot have any influence on him. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, and like a watch in the night. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. If God created time, then He obviously existed before time came into existence, so He does not need a Creator. Therefore, in the Bible, God says to Himself, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Human beings have a beginning and an end, and it is difficult for us to imagine there could be a being, that has no beginning or end. The laws of nature, such as thermal death, reduction of hydrogen and useful energy in the universe, does not affect God, because He is the author of these processes. God exists forever. He created time and He can stop it. When God eventually eliminates evil from the universe, living beings will have eternal life, and time will not negatively affect anything. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. All these attributes of God are something different from the essence of human beings, and for this reason, it is difficult for us to understand that there can exist the eternal, spiritual being, described as light, love, the Word, not of flesh and blood, whose essence no one from the three-dimensional world has ever seen. We are like the man from Flatland who cannot imagine a three-dimensional object, even as simple as a ball. As physical beings, we must abide in only one place in the universe, at certain coordinates. It is incomprehensible to us that God, as a spirit, can be present everywhere, know everything, hear everything, react to everything, and yet at the same time, sit in one place, on His throne in the heavenly temple. This way any man can, at any point send a prayer to God, and appeal to God for help. We use figurative speech for abstract concepts, which only human beings can understand. If we talk about appearing before God's face, we say that the omnipresent God heard us. We talk about the face of our country in the world, although a state can't have a literal face. We are talking about the general characteristics of our nation, which values are important to us, how other nations see us. So, God was never defined by physical descriptions. In our three dimensions, we can see only a small part of God's complex personality, but obviously, God is much more than what we can imagine, because we do not have knowledge about other dimensions, in which God also exists. In particular, we cannot imagine that God can exist out of the universe, unlimited by time, and has access to the past, present and the future. For this reason, the question, who created God? Is irrational. It would be like a teacher, who asks a student to draw a triangle with four sides. The terminology itself is contradictory, so there is no rational answer. Our Ignorance Most of the things, that most people believe about God, are wrong. Most of the things, that most people do not believe about God, are, right. People think in their shallow world, about the deep wisdom God used to create our world. If your brain is just a random set of chemicals, how can you trust your reasoning? By chance, our thinking process would be wrong most of the time, and we would be right just on rare occasions. No matter how much human knowledge increases, there are so many things we know exist, but essentially, we do not know what they are. For example, what is consciousness? We have consciousness, but we do not know what the consciousness is. Neurologists, psychiatrists, anatomy and psychology experts also do not know what consciousness is. We can describe the difference between a conscious and an unconscious person, we can describe characteristics of consciousness, but we do not know what consciousness is. We know that consciousness is not a physical object, but we do not know what it is, because we do not fully understand concepts outside of our material world. What is life? We do not know what life is. We know that we have it, but we do not know what makes us alive. What is energy? We do not even know what energy is, even physics professors do not know that. We can describe energy, we can measure it, we can use energy, but we do not know what energy is. We do not understand the nature of all of these concepts beyond our physical experience. We see their properties, we can describe them, but to us, it looks as if they belong to the world of ideas, 
or to another dimension that our mind still cannot understand. Somehow, we understand the existence of another realm of ideas, energy, consciousness and life, but we still do not know what they are. Imagine now how difficult it is for us to understand God, who created this incomprehensible world of ideas, with our consciousness, energy, and life in it. If we believe that there are consciousness, energy and life, and we do not know what they are, then it should not be a problem to believe in the existence of God, for whom we also do not know what He is, but we see His deeds, as we see what energy, consciousness and life can do. One should not be surprised, if elements of energy, consciousness and life are parts of God's invisible world for us, whose existence we can recognize, but we cannot fully explain. We believe that energy, consciousness and life exist, although we do not see them, because we can explain how they behave. Also, in our physical world, it is difficult to explain emotions, love, peace, or concepts such as truth, justice, grace, and reason. Of course, none of us can explain which technology God used, to create the world by saying the word. We cannot explain the technology God used, to come to this world to be incarnated, or how it is possible that He lived a perfect life in a human body, why He allowed Himself to be killed, and how He resurrected on the third day. We know that God just told us what He did, and He did not tell us how He did it, but witnesses of these events, went to countries around the world, to tell everyone about the salvation God offered to us. The apostles would rather die, than deny the message God gave them, to spread around the world. God's explanations of the world are very logical, while all other explanations lead to absurd situations, instead of answering questions. If no one ever saw God, does that mean God does not exist? If someone says, he does not believe anything he has not seen with his own eyes, or felt with one of his five senses, then he would not believe in many facts that we consider as true. Nobody ever saw an atom, did not feed it, touch it, hear it or sensed its taste. We cannot perceive an atom with any senses, but no one can say that the atomic bomb does not exist. No one ever saw an electron, nor has he felt it with any other of his senses. Our devices receive invisible radio signals, microwave ovens produce waves we do not see, and we have never seen photons. There are wireless technologies that cannot be visually detected. There is a long list of things we do not see, yet we believe they exist. We can make an experiment to prove that electrons, atoms or wireless transmission of information exist, even though we do not see them. We can see how they affect our physical world, and confirm their existence. Likewise, although we do not see God, we can recognize how He affected our world in the past with creation, and also how He touched many people with His absolute love, light, spirit, word, or consciousness, therefore we can recognize that God exists. God created things that do not spontaneously arise in nature, living beings that cannot be created by chance, but an intelligent designer is needed to plan, and create life with incomprehensible complex technology beyond our three dimensions. If it is acceptable in science to believe in the existence of atoms, electrons and wireless technologies, even if we do not see them, the same principle should be acceptable to us, that even if we do not see God, we recognize His existence through His attributes and actions, necessary for this world to exist. On the other hand, the illusions of magicians show us that we should not believe everything we see. Some perceptions, our brain cannot distinguish from tricks, so our impressions give us distorted understanding of reality. If we know that someone is a magician, we will know that it's a trick, and we will not believe that he performed a miracle. But if someone does not say he is a magician, he could easily deceive us, if we believe only what we see. Sometimes what we do not see is true, and what we do see is a lie. Who created matter? And who created God? Our questions not at the same level. Atheist Carl Sagan said, If we say that God has always been, why not save a step, and conclude that the universe has always been? There is a difference between the questions, who created matter that exploded in a big bang, and who created God? Matter is subject to the laws of nature, and cannot choose to behave differently. On the other hand, God is not subject to the laws of nature, and can behave differently from natural laws. So, the difference between these two questions, is that inorganic matter does not have the capacity to behave purposefully and intelligently, 
while God is alive and it is God's nature to use His intelligence to create a purpose for His creation. Atheism does not recognize singularities, events that happened only one time in history, because they believe in uniformism, conditions in nature that have always been the same as they are today. If something happened only one time in history, it would require breaking of the laws of nature, and intervention outside of nature. If atheists were to accept singularities, it would mean that all one-time events of God's creation are also possible, even though they are unique interventions in history, that science cannot explore. God created space and time, matter and energy, only once in history, and spread them in the universe He created. Inorganic matter has no potential to exist spontaneously and create everything else, especially life. Because the universe is very complicated and functional, it is necessary for a creator to have intelligence, omnipotence, design ideas, and the ability to invent a technology that never existed before even as an idea, and to use this technology in a precisely engineered way to achieve its purpose. Existing plants already have automatism of growing leaves, flowers, producing fruit, along with complicated exchange of gases from the air, or minerals and water from the soil. However, before there was the first apple, the idea of apple needed to be created in someone's mind, with specific taste, smell, color, leaves, tree height, and the technology the plant needs for extracting water and food from the soil. When such a fruit is imagined in someone's mind, he should be intelligent enough to invent completely new, unknown technology, to create the first apple tree, with the potential for all varieties of apple species. The first apple needed all functions perfectly developed right away. Let's see why. Imagine that an accidental collision of atoms somehow creates a seed, with a potential to grow into a tree. Even the existence of such a seed, would be statistically impossible to occur by accidental processes of nature, because no one has ever seen in nature, a random process able to create a new kind of life, or any kind of life at all. Imagine now, that a new tree had emerged from the new seed, and although the tree had grown, by pure chance leaves began to grow during wintertime, and everything is frozen. If a miracle happens, and the three somehow stay alive, flowers could accidentally bloom at the root, so insects could not pollinate the flowers, and there would be no fruits. Even if somehow by chance, this tree still produces some kind of fruit, the sun cannot give the necessary elements for growth and maturation, because it is under the ground. So, if all of these elements must be perfectly functional all at once, right on time and in the right place, it appears impossible for this tree to have a scion, and pass this information on, because by chance so many things could go wrong, and the tree would be useless, and would not be able to survive. For such a complicated design, we need an intelligent person, an engineer and designer, who will imagine and design the apple, smart enough to invent a technology to create a fully functional plant, that has everything in its place. It is, therefore, more reasonable to believe that the intelligent creator, who has always existed outside of space and time, designed and engineered the universe, because dead, non-intelligent matter requires an enormous series of lucky events, that has never been seen to occur in nature by pure chance, because the laws of nature would eliminate every partial, imperfect variation. Statistics deny a reasonable option, that accidental processes could create an incredibly complicated universe. In mathematics, we use an infinite series of numbers, but they do not need a cause. They were not created, they existed as an idea, and people discovered that numbers do not have a beginning or an end. God exists as a spiritual being in a different dimension than ours, and even though we do not see Him, we recognize the necessity for the existence of an infinite God, without the beginning or the end. The Cause of All Causes We know that there must be a first cause of all causes, which is not caused by anything, and exists from eternity. However, nature has laws that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed, which make impossible so-called Mother Nature to create the world we see. On the other hand, the intelligent creator without a cause for his existence, can create matter and energy, and intelligently arrange our universe. If somebody in the future should create some form of life in a laboratory, using inorganic matter, it would not prove that matter spontaneously could create life but it would prove that we need an intelligent scientist who can plan, design, and carry out the process of life creation. The laws of physics say, that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. It would be more precise to say that spontaneously in nature, 
matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed, or that a man cannot create or destroy matter. But even if people cannot do something, it does not mean that God cannot do it. However, considering the fact that matter and energy exist, it is clear that there must be someone who can create and destroy matter and energy, someone above the laws of nature. A series of causes must originate from the cause that caused everything else, and created the world we see. The first cause, without a cause of its existence, must be an intelligent person, the creator of the world, God who is able to imagine what to create, to make a plan and design, to invent technology, and to have the power to do it. If we need to choose what is more logical in terms of origin, whether dead matter created itself, or the eternal, omnipotent God arranged an incredibly complex universe, I do not have enough faith to be an atheist. If he is omnipotent, can God create a stone that he cannot lift up? This question is asked by people who doubt that God is omnipotent. If God exists, we would expect that he can do everything, as is written in the Bible. Many things are impossible for people, but Jesus said that for God nothing is impossible. Of course, omnipotence implies that God will not do illogical things, or logically contradictory things, or things with no purpose. Of course, it is impossible for anyone, including God, to create a more powerful being, because this is a logical absurdity. It is logically impossible to create a square triangle, or a stone that cannot be moved. If someone is powerful enough to create a stone, then he is powerful enough to move it. It is obvious that this taunt is given, to provoke the Almighty God to give up His omnipotence, or to use His omnipotence in vain, with no good and logical purpose. They would like to force God to sin and be like us, illogical beings that rejected God's principles. God always used His power for useful things, and never for evil or irrational things. There is no sense in provoking God to break His own laws and logic, just to prove to us that He exists. It is for our good, that God keeps everything according to the order and logic He implanted in the universe. God is not so naive, as to fall for such an obvious and malicious trick. Instead of challenging God to do meaningless and awful things, to prove to us He is omnipotent, it is better for us to pray and allow God to enable us to do good. Some people say, that the stone God does not want to move, is our free choice to decide how we want to live, regardless of whether our choices are good or bad. No matter how many people make bad choices, God will not remove our free will, and He also will not remove the consequences of evil choices, and ultimately eternal death. It would make more sense if people asked God to help us fix what we damaged by living in opposition to His principles, instead of inventing meaningless ideas without logic and a purpose. God Himself acts within the laws He created, not because He has limited power, but because this is good for everyone. God chooses to behave logically, and that's why we need to choose to behave logically too. God can hang our planet of six quintillion tons, in a vacuum without any support. He has illustrated to us His enormous power, so He can also open our eyes, and use His omnipotence to change us. God is not easy to understand. God is complicated. Everything that exists is complicated, or at least more complicated than it seems, and God who created everything, must be unimaginably more complicated than anything that exists. Our explanations for who God is, are just simplifications of the most complicated facts in the universe. If we take a look at complicated scientific explanations of atoms, light waves, and means eyes used to perceive light and transmit information to the brain, then we can realize how complicated is this being who created our very complicated universe. Atheists usually simplify God, and then attack Him, thinking they can explain God's motives and thoughts for managing the incredibly complex universe. Religion is not something people invented, rather it is derived from unchangeable facts found in nature. Reality is not as simple and easy to explain, as to how people would like it to be. Answers to many questions are difficult to get, because they are very complicated and not discovered yet. Reality cannot be discovered by speculations. Also, Religion cannot be confirmed or denied by speculations. Flatland, or trusting God The question, who created God? Is the question a man from Flatland would ask, because he believes there is nothing beyond his two dimensions, beyond what he can see or feel, and because he believes the truth is just what his limited brain can comprehend, 
while he disregards the truth beyond his understanding is impossible. The question is, whether we will decide to restrict the truth to our limited dimensions, and persuade one another that there is no other complex world outside of our dimensions, and nothing which our mind cannot comprehend. Instead of arrogantly pretending to know everything, and thinking the truth depends on what we think, the other possibility is to understand that there is a spiritual world above our own. Our Creator told us that we have a problem with our moral choices, and the rejection of His principles. God did not spend time explaining to us the physics and chemistry of His higher dimension world, because of our limitations. Instead, in the Bible, He explained something more important, how to be in the harmony with our Creator. God exists outside of time and space. God exists forever. God is eternal, and He offered to transform us into perfection, so we can live forever. It is not a question of whether God exists, but whether a man wants to honor his Heavenly Father. God has proven Himself and His existence, by creating our world. God's absence, means death for men, and God's presence, means life for men. These are the two opposite paradigms, the two choices on which we build our other life choices. The choice is ours, flatland, or trusting God.